Hi, today I will show you how to make an RC mini vehicle that will essentially be a hovercraft. It will both float and drive. I used this radio equipment in my recent projects, and many of you told me that it's expensive. Yes, it is, but you can make not only remote control planes with it, but also boats, cars, and hovercrafts. The links for the equipment used are in the video description section. You will need a piece of thick styrofoam, a speed controller, a motor with a propeller, a battery, some twist-off lids, screws, long nuts, self-locking nuts with a plastic element, and a servo. You will also need metal corners and a 10 by 30 millimeter board. The size of the styrofoam piece doesn't matter, mine is 28 by 14. It's important to shape it both like a boat and a car at the same time. Place the metal corners on the bottom of the styrofoam. Make through holes with a sharp stick like this. Two holes for each corner are enough. Insert the screws in the holes like this. They should move smoothly through the styrofoam. Put the corners onto the screws to even them. Tighten the nuts. Fasten all the other corners the same way. It should look like this. This connection is firm and sound. Mark the center point in the lids and make 8mm holes there. Insert the 8mm screws in those holes. The lids are thin, and there is no threading on the upper edges of the screws. Use washers for these screws. Fasten the washers with nuts like this. Make four elements with lids and screws. Fasten the self-locking nuts on each screw. You can use a vise for fastening these nuts. Ten minutes later. Forty minutes later. Connect the lids with screws to make two axes. Fasten a regular nut onto this screw and then put a long nut on top of it. Fasten another regular nut on this screw. Connect the two screws with the long nut. Fasten the long nut. This axle is going to be very reliable, firm, and strong. Lock the regular nuts. Center mark two holes in the board to make holes for attaching the motor to the board. You should do it so the board doesn't crack when you tighten the screws in it later. Attach the motor to the board. Make a slot for the board and the styrofoam here. Make it in the center of the hovercraft and somewhat to the back. Make holes in the board and connect the board and the styrofoam base with two plastic corners. Use these hinges. The links for them and all other parts are in the video description box. You can use these hinges not only for this project, but for many other projects too. Everything fits perfectly. Make a blade out of a piece of thin foam like this. Use polymer adhesive for fixing the blade. PVA glue won't do, so you should use polymer adhesive for this. Cover the spots that the hinges should be attached to with a thin layer of glue. Let the glue dry for a couple of minutes. Wait till the glue becomes like this. It became sticky and dried out a little.
attach the blade's glued spots to the hinges. Wait for 20 to 30 minutes for the glue to dry. Fasten the servo with a screw and glue it to the board. It's solid. You can lift the whole thing and shake it to make sure that nothing falls off. Make a small slot here, near the upper hole of the servo arm. Insert a horn into the slot. Unfold a paper clip. You can use any kind of clip. The size will be the same. Bend it like a hook and insert it into the horn like this. Cut off the excess. Widen the servo arm hole with a knife. You can take the arm off. You can also use a drill for this. Or do it with a knife. It's a very simple connection. Fasten the transmitter with plastic ties. Attach the speed controller to the opposite side of the board. Place it a bit higher, like here. I used to use two-sided tape for things like that, but now I use these plastic zip ties. They're the best for this job. You can use pliers to fasten the ties more tightly. Well, now it's okay. Connect the motor. One, two, three. Collect these loose wires. You can fasten them with plastic ties, too. Connect the speed controller wires to channel 3. The orange wire should be on the top. This is channel 3. It will control the motor rotation speed. Connect this servo wire to channel 1. Attach the battery to the styrofoam base with two-sided tape. This should be sound enough as the battery is placed safely and it will not be blown over. This blade doesn't look right. I need to reverse the controls on my transmitter. I set the correct rotation the same way. Go to reverse menu and change channel 1. Now it's set correctly. Press the cancel button. Check settings. The settings are OK. Check the forward movement. Check the rotation. Make an additional styrofoam platform and attach it to the bottom side of the base. Put some glue on the platform and let the glue dry for about five minutes. Now it's time to assemble everything. Press it and hold for about 20 minutes. This platform will increase the hovercraft's buoyancy. The wind is so strong that the hovercraft might flip over in the river. The radio equipment is not waterproof, so I won't risk trying to float it down the river. I'm sure it would float well in calm water. There it goes. Let's try in another direction. Let's check if the hovercraft can get in and out of the water. I'll turn it around by myself.
If you enjoyed watching the video, click like and subscribe to my channel. There's more where that came from. See you.